In this video, we're going to show you the process to import an image into the software, how to size and position that image, and then use the Fit Vector to Bitmap tool in order to create the vector geometry that you can see here. We're also going to look at some of the key ways that you may want to edit that geometry after it's been created. It should be noted that the quality of the vectors you get is very much going to depend on the quality of the bitmap that you provide to the software. It should become apparent um, with the process as you work through the video the type of bitmaps that would work well. Here we've deliberately chosen something that isn't particularly good quality, maybe just to highlight some of the things that you may need to fix after you've created the vectors. Let's start a new copy of the software. So let's begin by clicking on the icon to create a new file. We're going to set up a job here which is 12 inches in X, 4 inches in Y and material uh, Z is going to be set to the top of the block, material thickness 3 quarters of an inch. I'm going to leave the date and position set in the center here and hit OK. The icon to import an image is under file operations here and when we hover over it, it says import bitmap for tracing. If I click on that, it's going to allow me to browse my PC and find an image. There's various file types here. You can see bitmap, JPEG, GIF, TIFF, PNG. We've got one in the project folder here called Liberator Poster. I'm going to hit open and the software should automatically place that in the middle of your work area. And it'll automatically be selected as well, as you can see from the dotted line around it. The other thing that happens automatically when you import an image is the software creates a new layer. If we click on the down arrow here for the layer manager, we can see now we've got this layer called bitmap layer and that will always be put at the top of the layer list. And the reason for that is so that any image you import will not lay over the top of other vectors and make them not possible to see. So you can see that has something on it. We can click on the light bulb there for the visibility of that layer and when we switch the visibility off the object on it, the image disappears. Now that's not a special layer this, it is created automatically but I could certainly move images onto other layers and I can move vectors and uh, any other objects that can exist on a layer onto the bitmap layer as well. But generally we'd recommend just keeping that for any imported images as it makes things a little bit tidier to work with. Let's close that now. Now as with a vector object, I can resize or reposition a bitmap. You can't rotate a bitmap though because that would disrupt the grid that it sits on. It's made up of a whole bunch of pixels which is essentially tiny little squares that represent that image. To resize it, I can select it here. You can see if I deselect it grays out, click to select it there and I can use the icons and we'll come to those in a minute or I can go into transform mode and dynamically change its size and position. To go into transform mode we can click on the icon here or I can just click on the object again once it's selected and now you can see the fact that I could click in the middle of the part there and I could click here in order to resize this. If I just stretch around the corner without hitting any keys it'll use the opposite corner as an anchor. If I hold down shift then it will use the center as an anchor. So lots of different ways that I can move this around dynamically and change its size. For one, we could recenter that by clicking on a line material and clicking on the center both horizontally and vertically. And then we could size it to a specific size. So if we click on the icon here to set selected object size, we can come in here and I can say that I link XY will check that and set this to a width of 11, hit apply and close. So we're kind of filling our work area here. So as we've increased the image's size, you can see that this is not a particularly high resolution or good quality image and it's fairly typical of the type of thing that you might need to work with. In a lot of cases, you'd be better off to just manually draw vectors around these depending on what the um, final application was for. Here we're now going to show you how you can fit vectors to this automatically depending on some choices that you make within the fit vectors form. To fit vectors to an image you need to make sure the image is selected. Click on the icon here, trace bitmap. Now this will come into a special selection mode here and I have all the choices within the form in order to indicate the area that I would like to fit the vectors around. 
The first choice is choosing whether we want to fit vectors as a colour image or as a black and white. If I click on black and white you can see it just simplifies the image massively and I have this single slider which if I go to the left is going to reduce the amount of or, or basically lighten the image so that less things would be included in the selection and if I go to the right then you can see if we go all the way then the whole image just becomes black so somewhere in between you'll find kind of the shape that you want to fit vectors around. In this case because we're working with a colour image we may get more control if we use the colour option. The first thing the colour option does is reduce the number of colours in the image down to 16 and I can see those displayed here. Now for any of these colours I can click the boxes and that will automatically shade them with the trace colour that I've got set here. So there we can see a lot of this is this sort of black. Now it's shaded those with that red and all this is doing is indicating to me um, the area that it's going to fit vectors around. Now I can further reduce the number of colours to simplify this if I want by just using the slider and dragging this down. So maybe if we go down to half as many now I've got some options to come in here and choose the vectors that I want to fit or choose the colours that I want to fit this to and get a good idea of exactly where those vectors are going to go. If I was working with an image that had a lot of red in it then I might want to change the trace colour to something different and you can see I can just pick from any of the standard kind of colours in here to find something suitable. The red's actually quite good in this case because it shows up well against the other colours that are already in there which are mainly kind of browns and beige colours. If I want to change my colour selection up here and I don't want to uncheck and recheck a lot of boxes I can just click on the reset and that will remove all the check marks that I've got in there and I can effectively then start again. So here what I'm going to do is reduce the number of colours down to 8. I'm going to check the first three boxes here. Let's check the fourth and see what that gives us. That may be a little too much now. Let's just back off one there. Now we come down and choose options about how the vectors are going to be fitted to the colours that we've got selected there. And that's what the corner fit and the noise filter does. The other option at the bottom here, just to show you this, allows me to fade the image in order to maybe see it more clearly. Perhaps if I already had vectors in there or if it wasn't clear to me the colour, the area that I was going to fit the vectors to, then I might set the fading down to none or I can fade that fully there as well. So typically somewhere in between but it may be, depending on the type of image you've got, you could benefit from doing this. In terms of the options for fitting the vectors, I have the corner fit which shows how tightly it's going to try and fit corners that it finds in here. If I go all the way to this side, um, then it's going to very much try and create uh, sharp corners on the job and all the way here it should all be curves. So let's set that somewhere in the middle to start with. The noise filter will eliminate any areas smaller than the number of pixels shown here. So again, let's just set that in the middle. We'll come down and hit preview and see what this gives us. So the software is going to show us the vector that we're going to get based on the colours we've got selected here and the settings we've used at the bottom there. Now if I come in and we increase the noise filter say and hit preview I can see now I've actually lost a little vector in here which I do want. So you do have to be careful not to overdo it with these settings. If I set that back to 5 and hit preview we can see that little vector appear again there. Often this works well if you've got a lot of noise in the image to reduce um, a lot of the dots that you might get from it. For the corner fitting, if we set this all the way to tight and hit preview, now you can see that we're effectively just getting angles in here and no smooth lines in the job and I clearly don't want that. Where possible I want to try and represent a curve with a curve. So lots of different options in here if we set that back to 50% and hit preview. I'm reasonably happy with the vectors I've got there. You can see they're not perfect but you're rarely going to get a perfect set of vectors when fitting them to a bitmap because you're effectively transferring something that's made up of lots of small rectangles into something that you want to be smooth and clean. Here we'll take this though, apply and close. So we come back out, we have the image there and our vectors. If I want to work with both of these at the same time I may want to now fade this image further so that it's easier for me to see the vectors. I can do that by selecting it, I can right mouse click and we can go to object properties and I have the ability to fade this 
right out so that it makes the vectors more clear for me to see when it's not selected. So that's one option if I want to keep the bitmap switched on. Another option if I close that is just to switch the bitmap layer off completely and there I'll just see the vectors so I can now start to work with those and make any edits I need to them. First thing I want to do is delete these extra vectors up the top here. They were not part of what I want to include in my finished design so I can just go ahead and delete both of those there. Select them and hit delete on the keyboard. Now at this stage if we wanted to and we were completely happy with the vectors we'd created we could go over to the toolpaths tab and start calculating toolpaths based on them. Often though you may want to make a few edits before you start calculating the toolpaths so I want to show you some of the options that you have available here. Really how much you need to edit this would depend on how smooth and perfect you needed the vectors to be and how closely you needed to represent the original design. And these are clearly subjective decisions based on whatever particular job you're working on at the time. So the most basic edit I can make to any vector is to go in and start manually tweaking its component parts. We do that by going into node editing mode. Let's select this vector here. Let's click on the icon to zoom selected so that we get nice and close on that object and then to go into node editing mode I can hit N on the keyboard or I can click on the icon here under edit objects. Now we see the individual component pieces. For any of these objects we see here either the node itself, the control handle or the span, the vector line in between the nodes, I can make edits to them. I can see the edits available to me from the context sensitive menu so when I hover over a node and right mouse click I see the options available there. Sorry, just deselected it. If I hover over the span and right mouse click I see a different set of options that are available to me. All those also have shortcuts on them. If I right mouse click you can see some of the shortcuts there that I can get to. So for instance, we may want to come in and just delete a, a, a node. So I can right mouse click here and hit D on the keyboard to delete. Now what I can do is use the control handles, drag these around in order to change that to smooth out that particular part of the vector. I may want to come in and delete this. I can do that with a shortcut and hit D on the keyboard to remove that. Now this node you can see is not smooth and that's indicated by the fact it's black rather than blue. So I may want to hover over this, right mouse click and smooth it. Now it's turned blue and I've got two control handles so it's easier again for me to edit that and make a smooth transition. Shortcut key to smooth is S on the keyboard which I can do to that one down there. Now you can see this is quite a time consuming process but it gives me the maximum amount of control over exactly how the part is going to look. For instance, if I needed to sharpen up a corner like I've got here, I could come in, right mouse click, say insert a point there. Now I could hover over that, right mouse click and uncheck the smooth. That would allow me to move the handles here, either side of this. I may want to zoom in there so that I can see that more clearly and just drag that up in space there. So lots and lots of control over this with the node editing um, but as I said it can be quite time consuming so it just really depends on how accurate the job needs to be. Now another choice you've got that's a little more general than node editing and often is something you may want to do before you get into node editing mode is to fit curves to a vector to try and simplify them a little bit. Let's just zoom back out so click on the icon to zoom to fit and to exit node editing mode I can either click on the icon here or I can hit escape on the keyboard and I'll go back to selection mode. Now if we choose a few of these vectors I'm just going to select the sort of outer vectors here and we come over and click on the icon fit curves to selected vectors you can see the software shows me what those vectors look like at this stage and they're actually not too bad at this point. However I can come in and I can choose to fit um, either arcs, curves or straight lines to these. Typically the easiest to edit if you have curves in the design are going to be Bezier curves. We can try and retain sharp corners if we want. I'm going to uncheck that at the moment. I do want to replace selected vectors and let's just set the tolerance here to 0.01. Now this does mean that my vectors will change by up to this amount in distance from the original. So again I've just got to be aware of the accuracy. However when you fitted vectors to an image there's an inherent inaccuracy anyway. If 
we hit preview we can see the new result that's going to give us if we like the distribution of curves better and points better we can hit OK now we could go into node editing mode again and just come in and edit these accordingly so really very much subjective choice you may want to play around with the tolerances there to see the type of effect you're going to have on the vectors you're creating Let's just hit escape there to exit node editing mode again the last edit you can make is something much more drastic and that's effectively to say that the vectors that you've created um, with the vector fitting are not good enough so you want to replace them where this might happen is something like the word cycles here I can see that this font would probably intended to be fairly sharp to begin with and um, there just wasn't enough detail in the image for me to retain that sharpness so it may be that I want to replace this with a completely new set of text that may not exactly represent the font there and again it's just going to depend on the design you're doing and how much you need to retain the original shapes as to whether you would make this choice or not what I can do is select one of these and if I look at the very bottom I can see it's width and height so that's approximately 0.7 to 5 of an inch high around 3 quarters of an inch high so now if we come over click on draw text I'm going to choose a font uh, Arial Black or Arial Black depending how you want to pronounce it we'll make the letter height um, sorry the letter height in here 0.75 and the text I want to type up the top here is going to be cycles so type in the text at the top text height down the bottom I've chosen Arial Black which is a true type font so make sure you have that checked and let's go ahead and hit apply and close now we can just select that I'm going to move it up in space so it's roughly in the same position then just click on the end here and drag that in order to reduce the size a little we can zoom in there if we think that's a little bit high we can go ahead and just reduce that down as well and jog that up until we're happy with that position as I say it doesn't exactly match my original text but it is very close now if I click there it's a little tricky for me to select the text behind it so what I may want to do is just select that right mouse click move that to a new layer which we'll call new text and for a moment I'm going to make that invisible so I'm going to check that layer is not visible and not active and hit OK now I could either delete or move these vectors onto a layer of their own and if we switch back on the new text layer we can see we've replaced those with the text that we've got here obviously I could play around pick different fonts and try things and make edits to these so that I get it as close as possible to the original but sometimes it is worth not editing what you've got and just creating something from scratch whether that's using the text tool or the vector drawing tools again is a choice that you would make depending on what you're working with so that almost concludes the example what I will do is just come up to file save as and in the project folder we'll call this image vector fit underscore draw and so if you want you can open this and take a look at the vectors that we've created in this example so it's worth reiterating before we finish that although this is a powerful tool the quality of the bitmap is really going to dictate the quality of the vectors you're going to get from it so in some cases you're just not going to be able to fit the vectors to something in the image which is going to give you anything coherent at that point you need to look at manually creating the vectors yourself and there are videos that show that process once you have created vectors with this tool though they're no different than any other vector that you'd have whether you would drawn it yourself or imported it from another system so you can proceed to use them in exactly the same way that concludes this video thanks for watching